Hi, it's Tim Bader from Tim Bader Online. One accusation that's levelled at prophetic teachers like me is the idea that we teach people to accept truth from outside the Bible, to be led by our feelings instead of God's word. Or that by teaching people to listen to God in other ways than reading the Bible, that we somehow undermine its authority. Well, I can assure you that nothing is further from the truth. I absolutely believe in the authority of the Bible, and I agree with those critics that the Bible is the primary way God speaks. The Bible tells us everything we need to know about who God is, how he operates, and how we should relate to him. I also believe that we can hear God by other means, such as through prophetic words and pictures. But that's always tested by checking it against the truth of God's word in the Bible. If we want to understand God and what he is saying, we have to understand him. That means we have to understand his Bible. So with that in mind, I thought I would start a new series all about the Bible itself. But before I continue, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the rest of the series. It makes a huge difference to me and to the ministry. Our English speakers are blessed with lots of different translations, which gives rise to common questions. Which Bible should I read? Which Bible should I avoid? Which is the best translation? And there's a lot of confusion and misinformation about it. Some people say translation X is the only one you should read, and that you're in danger of misunderstanding and heresy if you read anything else. You'll hear others say word-for-word -word translations are the best, but don't always explain why. You'll hear still others say, never read that translation, that's a dangerous thing to do. My concern is that this leads to different camps springing up within God's church, which disagree with each other and sometimes get quite aggressive in defending their translation. But Jesus' prayer for his church in the Garden of Gethsemane was this, May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. So we're going to look at the Bible itself, and I want to look at how it's translated and interpreted for us, and what that means for us. Hopefully, along the way, we'll dispel some myths about it. Now, I'll say up front, I'm not a Bible scholar. I defer to them on many of the details. But what I'll try to do is to explain things in non-technical language so that non-scholars like you and me can make more informed decisions and to bless God's church in the process. In the next video, I'll start with asking the question, what is a word-for-word -word translation? See you next time.